Ah, I'm Davey. I'm awesome. And welcome to Davey's Awesome Movies, where I review the styles of movies I love, the alternative B-rated cult style flicks. And this week, I'm going to once again be reviewing a very underrated, very underappreciated comedy. This movie was made in 1994, and it was directed by Leonard Nimoy. You heard that right. Spock directed this. And it was written by David Weisberg and Douglas Cook. And produced by William Stewart, David Matten, and Diane Nabodoff. Made by Hollywood Pictures, Interscope Communications, and Polygram Film Entertainment. And distributed by Buena Vista Pictures. Ladies and gentlemen, holy matrimony. The movie opens at a state fair, where our female lead, Havana, played by Patricia Arquette, is confiding in her boss about her boyfriend. He said he really loved me. The boyfriend she's talking about is Peter, played by my brother's favorite actor. Emilio! No, not that one. His real favorite actor. Take Donovan! <laughs> While Havana's boss is comforting her... Oh, man, honey, <laughs> Wait a second, you're telling me that this hot chick is not into you? She drops the keys down to Peter, who sneaks in, opens the safe, and steals all the money inside. But to keep appearances... Get your hands off of my woman! Hercules! Despite the kept appearances of him being just an angry boyfriend, the next morning... After such an operation, a forecast mostly sunny skies today with brisk easterly wind... Yeah, it turns out the boss had a camera over the safe. Duh! Peter and Havana need to hide out somewhere, and Peter knows the perfect place. The Hutterites are a religious group located in parts of Canada. They're kind of like the Amish, similar in ways, but not like strict on technology. Like, they have vehicles, they have electricity and all that stuff. That's not their issue, but they do mostly live off the land, and have decided that the best thing for them to do is to completely separate themselves from the outside world. Because that's what us Christians are supposed to do, right? It's a colony. A religious colony. One of 300. Call it what you will, dude. Havana, though, doesn't want to go hide out with him in the colony. She wants to just split the money and leave. I don't trust you! Well, then it's a good thing you picked her as your partner in committing grand larceny. They arrive at the colony. I'm thirsty! And, of course, she's complaining. But Peter kind of ignores it and goes to see his little brother. Brandon, you return and you're back. You're finally back. Yes, of course. Ezekiel, played by a very young Joseph Gordon-Levitt. But then Peter needs to go speak to the elders, led by his uncle Willem. He tells the elders after his experience in the outside world that he's ready to repent and come back to the colony. Welcome home, Peter. Welcome. His uncle Wilhelm is played by Armin Mueller-Stahl. Peter, did you leave something in the car, like me, for instance? Yeah, even though they're not the Amish, there's still no chance in hell they would let her stay there. Peter pulls her outside and tells her to stay out here and leave him alone while he talks to the elders about them letting her stay there. But she's still complaining that she's thirsty. See there? That's a faucet. Knock yourself out. Well, there you go. Apparently in this colony, they're not too good to drink from a hose. Peter tells the elders that he wants to make this woman his wife. She wants to learn our way, and... Of course, this is our eyes! Outside, Havana meets Ezekiel. <laughs> if that's all it takes to scare you into fainting, let's hope you never leave that colony. After Peter tells her his plan for the two of them to marry so they can stay at that colony for a little while, while he thinks of another plan on the outside of the colony, she storms off. Peter takes this moment to go to his and his brother's secret hiding space and hide the money. The women of the colony all get together and talk about making Havana's wedding dress for her. It's a tradition. How about ruffles? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. What about pleats? Oh, yeah. oh yeah. And after telling them everything she wants out of a perfect wedding dress, we see the finished product. Close enough. Now it's time for dinner where all the husbands sit on one table and all the wives go sit on another table after the wives have all served their husbands their dinner. Eat well and choke. Oh. Yeah, apparently feminism has not hit this colony. Later... As far as going to town, anybody going better jump in. 
when they get to town. Can I get the ice cream? Yeah. Look. Ooh, can I? Ezekiel goes to get some ice cream. Peter goes to a bar, gets a couple of beers, and then hears a news story at the bar. Police are now quite certain that Peter Jacobson, who was identified in this sure. video taken with... Okay, my first problem with this, there's no way you could hear that TV in a bar. Or for that matter, any TV in any bar ever. Because of Peter's background, where he came from, the police did make it clear that they do expect that that's where he's going to go hide out, is in that colony. So, now realizing that this plan is a dud, Peter grabs Ezekiel and rushes home to go get Havana. A car supposed to go this fast? No, especially not on a dirt road. Ezekiel gets thrown from the car. Lucky for him, after the funeral, Ezekiel and the elders go to pay Havana a little visit. She's messier than the turkeys. Everybody mourns their own stuff. Yeah, mourning. Sure. What they're there for, though, is to tell Havana about their laws regarding her dead husband. Laws that come straight from the Bible. Her husband's brother shall go in unto her and take her to him to wife. In real life, the Hutterites do not practice this. As a matter of fact, that was a law in Leviticus specifically for the Jews, not the Gentiles. But then again, I don't even think the Jews really practice that anymore. But they tell her that they have to go through the process of Ezekiel asking her to marry him, so that she can refuse, but then she'll have to go on her way. They'll take her to the bus stop with $100 and have a good life, because that's just their laws and their tradition. However, they're stressing that Ezekiel does need to ask her before she can refuse. Do you want to marry me or not, you dumb pig? That was beautiful. As they're waiting for her to say no, though, she does something they did not expect. My answer is yes. And Ezekiel does exactly what we would expect. The other people in the colony are not happy about this. So now, another wedding. You may kiss a bride. Rather kiss a goat. I always cry at weddings. On his way home to his new bride on his wedding night, all the kids in the colony are picking on Ezekiel. Because, yeah. Being 12 years old and being married to a hot chick like Patricia Arquette would make you such a loser. So Ezekiel decides to put on a little performance. Let me show you what a real man is! But what is he really doing? <laughs> Everyone likes jumping on the bed. But now Havana has a surprise. Honey, I'm home! I'm home, lover boy! <laughs> but you wouldn't know what to do with a woman like that anyway. For example, the next morning he tries to get out for church, and this happens. Let's go, I'm ready. Ah! 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 See? Unable to get Havana to act like a proper wife, which by the way in the real world would get your ass kicked, Ezekiel goes looking around and looks through his and Peter's old hiding spot. That's a lot of ice cream. To get her to actually do some work, I found this in a flower bed. Looks American. That's not gonna fool her. <laughs> what? Okay, maybe it will. But she does find something. Classic. But now she's pissed. But he makes her an offer she cannot refuse. If you do as you're told, maybe I will give you the money. So she becomes a proper wife. Eat well, husband. Is that all it takes? A little bribery? Nah, with my wife that would be way too expensive. So she sets out and does housework. And more housework. And more housework. All this housework, I feel like Julie Andrews. You may feel like her, but you sure don't sing like her. But even through all this, with her being a proper wife, Ezekiel still hates being married. Then you give me my money. And I am gone. And he agrees to do just that. Until he actually reads the article that the money was with. After that, he decides he can't just give it back to her. He has to turn it over to the elders. I can't believe that a man I actually loved and married could be a thief. After hearing her out, they reach a decision. The money should be burned. Burned? But Wilhelm decides it needs to be returned. And Ezekiel wants to be the one to return it 
to atone for his brother. And as your wife, I'll help you in every way I can. And for some reason, they buy it. As the 12-year-old is driving into the States, Havana tells him that he can't just tell them he's there to return stolen money. They'll throw him in jail. And jail has... Face rats. So when they get to the Canadian-American border, he tries to lie. But he's not good at it, so he freaks out. Rats! Rats on my face! On my lung! I don't want to go to jail! I hate face rats! Yeah, kid, you are way too high-strung to be in America. The only problem the guard has, though, is that at 12 years old, even with that farmer's permit he has, he cannot legally drive into the United States. So Havana is going to have to drive. But she can't drive a stick. Why are you so hard? Come on, it's it was... Screw you! Maybe I can't drive a stick, but at least I can see a pair of boobs without fainting. Eventually they make it to a hotel. They get a room and Havana says that she's going to go off and meet up with an old friend. Jack. Daniels! Woohoo! Ah, him and my brother are good friends too. Havana meets someone at the bar. Havana! He took vows! Seek. Yeah, but to be fair, this guy isn't afraid of women. I mean, heck, Ezekiel, if you get that scared over breasts, imagine how he'd react over... other things. She does, though, go back to her and Ezekiel's room and they talk things out. A husband like you doesn't come along every day. Too easy. Any woman is going to be lucky to nab you. Yeah, any woman who doesn't mind waiting on a hand and foot and staying fully clothed at all times. The next day, things are good. They go get some food. Kim Lyndon Hines, who wants name but don't have fog and verdant and orchids and crystal mormon. Yeah, Hutterites are not Catholic. They're Anabaptists. It's like before they made this movie, they didn't research what these people were like at all. Havana tries to convince Ezekiel to just let's split the money and go our separate ways. When that fails... Look, it's a helicopter. Don't worry, she takes care of him. You know that little boy in there? Can you make sure that he gets to the bus station? But outside, Ezekiel meets Agent Markowitz, an FBI agent who's been trying to find the money and Havana. Any chance here, Ezekiel Jacobson? So Ezekiel gets in the FBI agent's car and they go looking for Havana. FBI! Pull over! Sick! They found her. But then... <laughs> um... Dude, you, uh... Have a minor in the car. All right. Hand over the money or get to know the color of the kid's brains. I think he's crooked. She does give him the money, though, and gets Ezekiel back. Then... Then she gets out and gets the money and her and Ezekiel leave. Where are they going? To the state fair! Ooh, I wanna ride the Gravitron! Havana says that because the FBI is on their tail, they need to ditch this truck and just take a plane the rest of the way to the state fair. But Ezekiel doesn't want to take a plane because they would have to use some of the stolen money to do it. He says, let's just take a bus. But Havana says, she doesn't do buses. Better. When they finally do get to the fair. Havana explains to Ezekiel that if she tries to return the money herself, they're going to arrest her. So it's time for her and Ezekiel to say goodbye. I'll pray for you. You really should. I mean, the biggest thing that Patricia Arquette ever did after this movie was stigmata. It was awesome. As Ezekiel leaves, though, Havana's getting a funny feeling. <laughs> so she helps in the best way she can by hitting the agent in his. <laughs> Winky. Of course, he chases after them, until Ezekiel finds something useful. <laughs> but there's one problem. Well, one more problem. When they get back to the boss that Havana had robbed, and they're about to arrest her, the boss explains to Ezekiel that there was a $25,000 reward for returning that money. That's for you. Ezekiel, though, offers to give the $25,000 back if he'll let Havana go. You got a deal. <laughs> Ew. Havana gets Ezekiel back to the colony. Friends forever? <laughs> Ew. Seriously, stop spitting! 
Havana says she's going back to her home in Minnesota to see her family. <laughs> Aww. Joseph Gordon-Levitt's first kiss. It really was. So there you have it. That's the 1994 movie, Holy Matrimony. This was a very good, very funny movie that really didn't get the play it deserved. It's very original, very well written, very well put together, and very well casted. But because it was underappreciated and not very promoted, it did tank. It had a $16 million budget and only did about 700000 in the box office. It's now got a bit of a cult following, so I would say at this point, it's anybody's guess if it's made its money back, but it wouldn't be surprising to find out it didn't because it doesn't have a huge cult following. So let's change that. Because the thing is, most people who have actually seen this movie do like it. On average of surveys of people who have actually watched this movie, about 83% of them actually love this movie. Now granted, this movie did not present the Hutterites very well. Like I kind of talked about, it doesn't seem like they really fact-checked or researched what these people were like at all. They just heard about them and said, yeah, we can do this. Because no, they don't practice the Leverite marriage, and really, the only way you can get married in their colony is if you are a baptized Hutterite. However, this was a good filler movie for Patricia Arquette, and was actually good for Joseph Gordon-Levitt, as this was his first starring role in a film. And definitely wasn't his last. This was before he was in Third Rock from the Sun, before Ten Things I Hate About You, and all the other movies he's gone on to make. But sadly, where this was not the first movie that Leonard Nimoy ever directed, it was his last. He never actually directed another movie until his death in 2015. Rest in peace, Leonard Nimoy. But like I said, this is a very fun, very fantastic movie, and I have enjoyed it since my childhood, and I think all of you would enjoy it too. Because like I said, most people have never heard of this movie, and the people who have and have watched it actually love it. So for yourself, if you get a chance, you have the opportunity, check out Holy Matrimony. It's really fun. So there you have it. That's my movie review this week. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and if you did, make sure to hit like. Hit subscribe. Hit that little bell so you get notifications from when I post new videos, and leave a comment. If you've seen Holy Matrimony, tell me what you thought of Holy Matrimony. Love you guys.